We've shared recently on this channel a way to expand your advanced vocabulary through synonyms. Well, one of the things we really need to work on is getting those really overused terms in your writing, like important, nice, unique, those things that people keep saying over and over and over again. Let's get you some synonyms that you can use to be much more specific to what you mean so that you can express yourself better in a more varied way. We got five words for you today. Let's get into it. What's up guys and welcome back to Wagwell Friends English. One of the most frustrating things about being an advanced learner is that you feel like you know so much but you're still being kind of like stuck. You can say what you mean, but it's not as accurate as you want it to be. You can say that you're sad, for example, but what kind of sad? Are you depressed, sad, melancholy? What kind of sad? Are you just feeling blue? Like, what is it? And though you might be able to say whether you're extremely sad or something like that or grieving, you might not have the little nuances in English just yet. That's where learning these synonyms is super, super helpful. We're trying to help you not only vary your language, especially when you write, but also be able to express yourself more fully and accurately. So the first idea that we want you to be able to replace is the idea or the term important or key. This is the key thing we need to know today, or this is the most important thing. Yes, we do say that a lot when we're speaking, but when you're writing, you don't want to have important, 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 important. You don't want every single email you write at work to say important or key in it because then everything is important to you. So therefore it's all lower in quality. You want to be able to organize a little bit what you mean exactly. So to vary your words, to make it more powerful, here are some ideas. So if you are meaning an important thing, you could use something like urgent or critical or major, essential, chief, significant. These are aspects or things that hold a lot more weight than mm -hmm. other things. And so you don't want to just say, I have an important announcement. Why is it important is what you're getting at. Is it important because the deadline is soon? That would be urgent, right? This is urgent. We need a decision now in order to move forward. Critical would be an example of like, things can't move forward until this is addressed. So that means that all things have to stop. Not yeah. just like some things, but like the business will fail if yeah. we don't get this done first. Yeah, essential emphasizes that it's got to be there. Like you've got to have this one thing in order for the whole thing to work. And some of this guys, I can tell you right now, already sounds like the same thing over and over, but it's not. The emphasis with urgent is on time. The emphasis on critical is there's a little bit of time that is a problem here, but it's also necessary to the essence of the thing. To say that something is essential means it's necessary to the essence, but it doesn't have anything to do with time. Okay, there's not an emphasis on time with essential. Significant, chief, major, these are a lot more similar and you can use these fairly interchangeably, I would say, but it, it basically means important, like the top, top notch, something like this. Another meaning of important that you can replace is an important person. So for example, you could say something like influential or powerful, high level, prestigious, or big league. Which one you use depends on what you mean exactly. If you mean top level, that means that person they have promoted, they are at the top, they are in the decision making group. So they are top level, meaning they're, they're the boss. They're the boss boss. If you have something like influential, it means there's something about their character or the things that they do that just really influences and impacts the people around them. So when they say, yes, we're going to do this, they're just a natural leader. People want to follow them because they're just naturally charismatic. They are influential because what they decide is what everybody else wants to do. While prestigious, on the other hand, more has to do with their achievements and just yes. who they are as a person. Maybe they don't have a lot of decision-making power, but they're just an amazing person to yeah. be around because of the achievements that they have had in the past. Right, and maybe they're a terrible leader. You can be a terrible leader and be a prestigious person. There's a little bit of a difference here in the nuance of which one you use really does matter. Another one that's very informal is big league because it comes from the idea of baseball and sports. And so we bring it in to say, hey, this person is in the big leagues, meaning that they're playing on a different level than we are. So if you're a small business and maybe another person like a consultant comes in, he's giving you advice about the coming quarters. You can say, this guy's from the big leagues. We need to yeah. take his advice seriously. If we want to grow this business and take it to the next level, we need to play like we're on the next level. Okay. So you have to listen to somebody from the big leagues. The next word we're going to talk about today is amazing and awesome. Americans are pretty bad about this. We say awesome all the time and it gets watered down. Like you can say it. It's okay to say things repetitively. That is informal speech is full of redundant things. We've talked about that in this video here, but when you're writing, you don't want to say that's awesome all the time. You don't want to have every email that you say when somebody tells you good news is like, that's amazing. That's awesome. 
Yeah, right? because you don't want to say the same thing. It's far more meaningful to us for you to compliment or for you to celebrate something in words that were intentionally chosen, right? To have a lot of different words to use. So you want to expand your toolbox. If you are some kind of manager, you should especially focus on expanding how many synonyms you have for this word and the ways that you praise somebody for or something that they do. For example, you could say something like breathtaking or stunning, astonishing, remarkable, even staggering. Mm -hmm. Again, which one of these you choose depends on what kind of frame of reference or what light you want to shade that whatever is awesome in. So for example, if you say breathtaking or staggering, then the idea is like it's physically overwhelming almost where you're looking at a very beautiful view of the mountains mm -hmm. or the Grand Canyon and you look at that and you say, wow, this really takes my breath away. Like that's how yeah. beautiful or right. awesome it really is. And you'll hear people say that about clothing as well. If they really like this fashion or this outfit or somebody comes out, they'll say this about their daughters getting into a prom dress for their high school prom. Okay, they'll say, wow, you look breathtaking. Okay, that's kind of the idea. It's a very high compliment. Mm -hmm. Staggering can be a good thing or a bad thing. You could say the statistics are staggering. It's just staggering how quickly kids grow, okay? It's staggering, really. But then you also have the negative side of it and the negative shade of it is like the way the economy is going right now is staggering. That could be a bad thing. So you've got to be careful in how you use this one. But the idea is just awesome and amazing, whether it's meant sarcastically or whether it's meant literally. Staggering can be used both ways. Another example is stunning. So again, you have this idea where it stuns or inhibits the other person because whatever is in front of them is either can be amazing in a good way, but it also can be again in a negative sense. Mm -hmm. And part of this comes from the idea of awesome. The original idea of awesome was you're awe struck at this. That's why you have things that are so physical imagery in this kind of word because mm -hmm. when you see something powerful or beautiful or terrifying even, that can be awesome. So the range of synonyms here could be powerful or beautiful or awesome or just big, huge. It just blows your mind and how massive it is. Astonishing could be one of those negative ideas mm -hmm. that can be carried with this idea of awesome. A lot of Americans will understand like the history of astonished can be used in a negative light of like, wow, that was astonishing in a sarcastic way to be like, that was so impressively bad that I am shocked actually. Let's do a more toned down one, kind of like the way everybody just throws awesome, like, wow, that's awesome. Okay, you can say remarkable. This is a good way to just really change it over. And now remarkable literally means it's so amazing, we gotta mark that. Like it's just, we've gotta note that it's that amazing. But we say it enough that it's kind of come down to more like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's remarkable, like fascinating or something like that. Remarkable is a very toned down, but still a kind of punchy word to yeah. use. So the next overused word is nice, like for a thing or for a person. So a nice thing, a nice person. For a thing, you could just switch it to enjoyable. Like this is enjoyable, this food is enjoyable. You can say nice, it's a nice restaurant, it's a nice coffee shop, but you could also say it's an enjoyable one, okay? That's an easy switch. The weather is enjoyable, right? Instead of the weather is nice. But to mix it up, if you wanna emphasize that you feel fulfilled or satisfied with something, you'd say, wow, that's satisfying. Some people will say this when they're watching a video of really repetitive things like machines working or somebody cutting something really fast and so uniformly, they'll say, wow, that's so satisfying, right? What they mean is it's nice. Like it's nice to watch that. It's mesmerizing. Another thing that you could say is delightful. And the fact that there are just some things in this world that are just bright, colorful, happy, delightful things that make my day better. Just mm -hmm. by being there, that yes. would be delightful, as in it's mm -hmm. just like lit up my day. Like playing with a puppy is delightful. If you want to emphasize things that are entertaining or amusing, these are the words you could say instead of nice. Like, it's nice to watch TV, or that movie was nice. Or the, the play was nice. The opera was nice. You can change that to entertaining or amusing. So amusing, it's got this idea of humor to it. But it doesn't have to be humor where you're just slapping your knee. You're just like, you're rolling on the floor laughing. Okay, it's not like that. It's kind of more like a, that made me giggle a little. Like that was amusing. That made me smile. If you say, it was a nice joke. You say, that was an amusing joke. Okay, that was an amusing statement or an amusing story. Something like this. If it made you crack a smile, you can say amusing. But if you're going to try to talk about a person where you're trying mm -hmm. to talk about maybe your children or your parents or a person that you know at work, then you're going to have to use a few different synonyms here. Mm, like a pleasant person. Someone who is a pleasant person, this is a little bit of a distanced thing to say, but if you're trying to talk to an acquaintance or someone you just met, 
you might say, well, yeah, they, they seem to be a pleasant person. That's kind of like a, it was enjoyable, they were friendly, amiable, something like this. They're a pleasant person to be around. Or you could use it in the opposite and say they are not a pleasant person to be around. Another one is personable, which mm -hmm. this is probably a weird term for some of you, but the idea is that they're just a nice person overall. Like it's a good to be in that interaction with that person. They're personable, they're personal. That idea with this kind of like, that's a nice person. Interpersonal skills, they're very yeah. personable. Good natured, this is one that's actually really common around here. To describe somebody as good natured means that they're very laid back, they're easy going, they are just generally a kind, personable person, they're a nice person, right? But they're good natured, meaning their nature is good. Like the essence of that person, their personality is just a pleasant one to be around. So you could just say they're a good natured person. The next two kind of go together. They're likable and delightful. We already use delightful for a thing. We can also use delightful for a person and both likable and delightful has this idea. Of, imagine like a happy child and they're just, it, they're easy to like. They are easy to just want to be around because they're just mm -hmm. so happy all the time. Yeah. That's the idea. Instead of saying they're a nice kid, it would be a lot better to say they're delightful or they are very likable. The next one is unique. We've got three different types of synonyms we want to give you here. Unique meaning the only one. Unique meaning unique to a particular group or organization or people or type of thing, okay? Something that is unique to that, meaning you can only find it in that part of the world or in that organization. But then you have particularly remarkable or special, just above the rest, okay? So we have three different types of synonyms to give you here. So for the only one, you have things like special, which you've probably heard of, exclusive, which means mm -hmm. that only here, only here, only on this platform or only in this area, it is unique. You can't find this anywhere else. And it's kind of like a high ticket thing too, which yeah. is why they say our exclusive VIP program or exclusive member podcast or something like that. Another one though is distinctive. So mm. if there's a list of things or a, a list of options and you say this is a distinctive option, this is a distinctive characteristic, then it means that this stands out. All of these are gonna have some sort of like uh, element of there's a lot of options, but this one is, it's like looking to the left and to the right, like yeah, I'm special. So when you say distinctive, it could be t distinctive for a good thing or a bad thing. It doesn't say which one, but distinctive meaning standing out from the rest. It's very obvious from the others. Closer to the negative side, we have unusual or quirky. Now, unusual can be used in a positive way, but typically I, I hear it more in the negative way. Well, it's like, that was an unusual way to handle that. That was an unusual statement or that was an unusual meeting. It kind of has shades of negativity underneath that. Versus quirky, similar to that in the fact that it's weird, weird but sometimes in a lighthearted way. So it's not like the person is like a bad person. It's just like, they're weird. They're a weird person. They're not like the rest. And an idiom here for you is one and only. You can say the one and only cat that can do that or the one and only and they'll say like a name. So the one and only Josh Williams, okay. Even though that name is very common, but yeah. none, no it's others fine. are like him, it's fine. so. It's fine. As opposed to this, you have this idea of belonging to a group. For example, you could say peculiar to, specific to, particular to, you have all of these directional words because it's a directional kind of sense to this where it's specific to this group, it's peculiar to this, area. You can think of it in a way of talking about animals that you can only find in the Amazon or animals you can only find in a specific region. You could say this animal is only found in the Amazon, okay, or that this species of frog is typical to this area of the rainforest. All of that works, but that's the way that you're going to encounter these synonyms the most and it's excellent for that. What if I want to use unique if I'm talking about it's just way better than everything else? Here you've got things like notable, which is probably the most toned down word on this list because then you have outstanding. Okay, something that just stands way out there. It's just far and above everything else. You have extraordinary, which is the same. It's extraordinary. It's way outside of ordinary. It's just amazing. Unparalleled, meaning nothing else is like it. There's nothing else that can come even close. And then matchless, okay? It's kind of the same idea as unparalleled. It's, there's no match for it. It's just above everything else that's out there. So these are far more meaningful ways to say unique. Another one you could probably say in this case is unrivaled, especially mm -hmm. if you have terms of opponents, whether it's competitors or opponents, where you say this person has no competition. The last one we're gonna talk about today is beautiful. 
Which could go so many ways. You have to be specific. You could say attractive, meaning like there's attraction there because of the way that somebody or something looks. You can say an attractive job offer, an attractive person. We can use attractive in a lot of ways. But then you have something like exquisite, which is far higher. It just means something is just so luxurious. It's just so unique and luxurious and beautiful. Okay, that's kind of the idea is intricate detail. But then you have elegant, which is another way to say that. We could say like an elegant dress, an elegant hairstyle. You could say an elegant piece of furniture, or an elegant painting, all of those. Again, it's more of this luxurious, high quality, top notch idea. A couple of others are heavenly, just meaning like it has to come from heaven because it's it so looks good. that beautiful or graceful in the fact that it has very smooth movements. Mm. So there's not any jumping around. There's not any jostling about. It's smooth. It's graceful, like a dance. Yeah, like dance can be graceful. We can also say somebody who is a beautiful person because of the way that they handle conflict, okay? Maybe they're just an extremely gracious person. They are a graceful person. The next one is for like a man. You want to be very specific. If you're going to say a man is beautiful versus a woman is beautiful, there's gonna be some words that we use particular to one of those. For example, you could say something like handsome or good looking or charming. Charming in particular has more of the idea of like how does that person act more so than how they actually look, the appearance. The whole package. Yeah. It, it, to be a charming man is to be like, you dress well, you've got the appropriate body language and smooth talk. Prince Charming. For a woman though, you should probably use different words. Yeah, you could say pretty, you could say lovely, or you could even say gorgeous. This is a scale here. You could say a pretty little girl, a pretty person, a pretty woman, but just pretty. It's a little bit lower, it's used a lot, so you don't really have to stick with that one. But if you say lovely, you're looking for a more refined, probably closer to elegant, though not exactly elegant. But then you have gorgeous. Gorgeous means somebody has just gone all out. They are drop dead gorgeous. That's one thing that we could say. So gorgeous has more of this idea that a lot of work has gone into getting ready. In this case, gorgeous is gonna be, you could say things are gorgeous. You could say women are gorgeous. You could say all kinds of things are gorgeous, but you can really emphasize this word. It doesn't sound like a beautiful word at first, but when you hear the way that Americans like emphasize it, you can understand the meaning. Thank you guys so much for watching because these kind of videos, I know for some people it might seem as this whole synonym network can be really difficult to handle. Difficult because there's lots of different moving parts. Mm -hmm. However, that is exactly what we need to fully express ourselves. We can't just say that's a beautiful ma'am. We've got a guide for you to help you walk through this process, keep things organized, keep track of everything and practice. So if you want to get a hold of that guide, you can click on the link below in the description or you can watch this video right here and you will find the link there. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.